you. We'll see if it's me. Am I coming on? Okay. Um, today is the third Sunday in Advent. It is Gaudet Sunday. Gaudet is the Latin term for rejoice. So today we're supposed to find some time, some way to rejoice. And we're going to look at John the Baptist, who isn't always one who helps us rejoice. But we'll see what joy he brings us. A um, couple of things to note in the prayers. Larry Stilwell's mother, Florence Stilwell, lives in Texas. She died the day before yesterday. So Larry and Lucy are on their way to Texas for the funeral. Last night, Larry Hopper died. Larry is Marilyn Boston's brother. And Larry had been living with uh, Marilyn the past few years as he dealt with Parkinson's disease. We're thankful that Karen Bowman is here to play. Um, so we thank you, Karen. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Lord of Israel who comes to set us free, the mighty Savior who comes to show mercy, the dawn from on high who guides us into peace. Let us come before God in confession. To you, O God, we lift up our souls. You know us through and through. We confess our sins to you. Remember not our sins. Remember us with your steadfast love. Show us your ways. Teach us your paths and lead us in justice and truth for the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Sisters and brothers, come with joy and draw water from the well of salvation. Remember the gift of baptism. Your sin is washed away in the name of Jesus. You belong to Christ. You are anointed to serve. Stand up and raise your heads. The reign of God is near. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Joy is the celebration given by God through the light of the world. Joy is the celebration given by God at the birth of the Christ child. Joy is the celebration when the angels sang, Glory to God in the highest. Let us dance and sing and shout for joy. Christ is coming again. Let us pray. Source of light, shine in our lives and in your world with your life-giving joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the preaching of John, that rejoicing in your salvation, we may bring forth the fruits of repentance through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
a reading from Zephaniah. <clears throat> Sing aloud, <clears throat> O daughter Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be no made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. 
I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. Of course, last night the church was full. We had the Sunday School Christmas program. So I'm going to forego a children's sermon this morning. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to begin by showing you a cartoon, a Peanuts cartoon. It's about pig pen. If you remember the pig pen character, he was constantly dirty, had a cloud of dirt. He offered Charlie Brown a piece of candy once and Charlie Brown unwrapped it and Snoopy came and grabbed it out of his hand and he was thankful. <laughs> so here is, <clears throat> I, I forget the name of this little girl, it's not Lucy, but I'm going to find Pigpen and personally give him a good scrubbing. And then she acts surprised. You're already clean. What a surprise. And then his response, because he's only half clean. She says, I guess there's hope for him after all. It's a good Lutheran cartoon. Because Martin Luther said, we are simultaneously sinners and saints. We never seem to get clean. We can't. Only God can declare us clean. Let's uh, take a quick look at this text. Anne de Bass said this of this text. I, well, I don't know about you, but frankly, if that was good news, remember John the Baptist, or we, we have the, Luke ended this in verse 18 by saying, with these, in other words, John the Baptist spread good news. Well, and DeBass, LeBass says, well, I don't know about you, but frankly, if that was good news, I'd read to think what the bad news was. He starts off by calling the crowd a brood of vipers, goes on to tell them that their long-cherished theology is completely wrong, and finishes off with the glorious prospect of them being burned with unquenchable fire. And then she reflects. I doubt whether it sounded any better to the people of John's time either. Their society was not so very different from ours, with people looking for a quick, superficial fix. Though there might not have been quite the range of temptations in the first century that we have today, that impulse to make things feel better on the surface, rather than dealing with the deeper issues, seems to have been just as strong. John wasn't talking about merely cleaning us up, taking care of all of our petty sins, our personal piety issues. John came to break people's hearts to break our hearts so something special could happen. A true repentance could happen. It's often said that Lutherans believe that that's what the law does to us. God hammers us with the law, has a gospel sitting right above our hearts, and hammers us with the law. You don't measure up. So it breaks our heart so the gospel can fall in. The good news that you are saved by grace. Your life is hid with God 
in Christ. So what is repentance, according to John? If we look at what he asks people to do, repentance is simply stop living in such a way that you are acting as though God does not exist. And everything you seem to be doing, you seem to be doing to save yourself. So in a sense, John is saying repent. Stop trying to save yourself. Trust God. His kingdom is very near. His kingdom is coming in Christ. Let me give you a couple. Uh, so live as though you believe in God. Let me give you a couple examples of this, even right from our text. The crowds come and say, what then should we do? And John is very practical. He says, if you're going to really be repentant and truly live as, God, as though God exists and God's taking care of you and that you trust God, if you happen to have two coats, and I'm ashamed to say I've got a closet full of coats, if you have two coats, give one away. Act as though you know God's going to take care of you. Give one of those coats away. You don't need it anyway. Even the soldiers, well, the tax collectors come to him and say, what should we do? And John doesn't lay down a big, hard, difficult thing. He says, some of you cheat people. And you cheat people because you want to get ahead in life and you're acting as though God isn't taking care of you. Stop cheating people. Just take the amount that's due you. That's simple. And then the soldiers. Now these were not Roman soldiers. These were Jewish mercenaries that worked for the Romans. And the Romans intentionally did not pay them a living wage and expected them to rob from the very people that they were supposed to protect. And John says, be content with your wages. Trust that God will take care of you. Don't steal from people. Repentance. We're actually to turn to God and trust that he will take care of us. Isn't that nice and simple? So I don't know if you came here today to have your heart broken. But John wants to break it. To let the gospel to help you to trust God and believe and trust the gospel. I read of a kingdom experience. Some of you, um, and I guess our nation, has developed a tremendous prejudice against uh, Muslim people. Muslim people, of course, I do believe, need to hear the gospel from us, but they are people just like you and I. Now, there's radical people out there that do radical things, but if we're really trusting God, our Muslim neighbors in this country, we should be as kind to them as we are to anyone. Arab-American poet Naomi Nye tells of an experience she had in an airport. She was just informed that her flight was going to be delayed four hours. So she just started wandering around the airport. But then she heard a call over the loudspeaker that said, if anyone in the vicinity of gate 4A understands any Arabic, please come to that gate immediately. She goes, well, that's strange. That's my gate. So she went to that gate, and there she saw the problem. A woman in a 
flowing gown, an elderly woman, was curled up on a ball in the middle of the floor, sobbing. And as soon as she came up to the desk, the people behind the desk said, talk to her and find out what her problem is. And when they told her that her flight was delayed for hours, she thought they told her her flight was canceled. And she needed to take this flight to Texas for medical treatment for a problem that may be terminal. So she thought her life was ended. So Naomi Nye spoke with her. She did not know Arabic very well, but she was able to convince her that everything was all right, that she would get her flight. She uh, called her son, who was going to pick her up at the airport, called uh, many people in her family, made so many phone calls it took a couple of hours. And then she said, a strange thing happened. This elderly woman opened up her bag and she had some little cookies that were called Mammool cookies. Little powdered sugar crumbly mounds stuffed with dates and nuts. And she went around and offered them to every single woman who was sitting at that gate. Naomi Nye says, to my amazement, not a single woman declined one of those cookies. It was like a sacrament. The traveler from Argentina, the mom from California, the lovely woman from Laredo, we were all covered with the same powdered sugar and smiling. There is no better cookie. And then the airline broke out the free beverages from huge coolers and two little girls from our flight ran around serving us all apple juice and they were covered with powdered sugar too. I noticed my new best friend. By now we were holding hands. She had a potted plant. Now, if you never get involved in people's lives, you don't learn anything. I learned something from this story. She had a potted plant poking out of her bag, some medicinal thing with green furry leaves. But it's an old country custom that when you travel, carry a potted plant so you know that you are rooted somewhere. I thought that was nice. Naomi and I says of this, not a single person in this gate, once the crying of confusion stopped, seemed apprehensive about any other person. They took the cookies. I wanted to hug all those other women too. This can still happen. Not everything is lost. We carry a terrible burden of separation from people. And it doesn't allow God's kingdom to flow. When we're so afraid about saving ourselves, John says, repent. Trust God. Now, one of the things we Americans do not hear in this text, notice when groups came to John, they didn't say, what must I do? They said, what then should we do? We Americans have a hard time hearing we. What should we do? The Sion Lutheran Church should be asking that question. What should we do? And we do a lot. By the way, next Saturday, from 9 to noon, is it 9 to noon, Bruce? You can uh, work at the Cross Lines toy stores with other Messiah people. Friday night, we had the Springfield Boys Choir here. 480 people were here. Out of that crowd, a woman came up to me and said, 
Pastor Dan, I don't know if you remember me. And I'll have to say I did not. But she said, you helped me a couple of years ago. Excuse me, didn't have enough sleep last night. And the card says, <clears throat> God works in wonderful ways. By the way, she could have just been giving this to you. I will never forget your support when I was in the, a dark place in my life. Thank you for helping me. My son is singing in your church tonight. What should we do? Continue to serve, help people, especially those in need. Don't save ourselves. Don't act as though everyone else is here to serve us, but to serve. Bring in God's kingdom. Amen. together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Emmanuel has come, is here, and is coming soon. Let us join in prayer for the church, the earth, and those who are in need, that all receive what God promises to give. God of Advent Joy, we pray for the church throughout the world, for bishops, pastors, and our seminaries. May we increase in practices that truly enact justice and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our Creator, we pray for the earth, for glaciers, for the protection of dormant vegetation and hibernating animals. Grant us the wisdom to use and care for the creatures and landscapes we live among. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, we pray for our nation and for the nations of the world, for soldiers and police, for all who suffer political oppression, and we pray for our enemies. We especially remember San Bernardino and the families of the terrorism victims. We pray with hope in the new climate treaty developed and we pray for those nations at war. Send your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those in need, for those who are sick or cold, injured or at cast. We remember especially Mitch Allen, Odella Arnold, Ken Bohannon, Karen Bowman, Linda Brashear, Pam Cole, Kelly and Lucy Colwell, Jeff Dykeman, Ron Fells, April Hollinger, Debbie Huff, Dustin Jones, Ellen Caymans, Jim Lampy, Richard Law, Alan Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Willis Melgram, Adam Miesenbrink, Noah Miller, Shauna Nelson, Bob Oakry, Lynn Peterson, Lori Pettit, Cindy Plaster, Kylie Timmerberg, and Ann Wilbur. Are there any others? We rejoice in you always, and again we say rejoice. Hear our prayers of gratefulness, especially for our children and our Sunday school program. We praise you, O God, for the lives of all the faithfully departed. Receive into your eternal presence those who have died, especially the family, especially Florence Stillwell and Larry Hopper. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers, faithful God, as we watch and wait for your coming among us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We live unto the Lord. Let us give him thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new, in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and joy their unending hymn. Holy God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope. We praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us, and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Don't forget, today we commune via intinction where you'll receive the bread or a wafer in your hand. Hold on to it until the chalice comes by and dip or intinct it into the wine. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. One, we give you thanks that in this bread and cup we have feasted again on your endless love. Let that love overflow more and more in our lives, that we may be messengers to prepare your way, harvesters of justice and righteousness, and bearers of your eternal word, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. today so myself and a few other council members will be there to discuss the results of the survey that we had so we would love to have you come and give us feedback ask us questions and we can chat about those in a smaller informal group so we'll be there waiting if you guys want to come thank you helping with the cross lines food store Bruce is standing back there. He'll help you. And I'm just going to tell you to read your messenger. Um, right now, and I realize uh, um, last night plans can be made and things can change when someone dies, but as of last night, the thought was that Marilyn's brother's funeral would be here on Wednesday. So watch for more information about that. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us. Thanks be to God.